Hello, Matthews Gatos here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fill in the unit circle using patterns. So let's start with the angles first. So my tip for you is let's start by labeling the quadrantal angles. So those are the ones that fall onto the X or the Y axis. So I have 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Then I'm going to start at 0 and work my way around the unit circle by adding 30, 45, 60 over and over. So 0 plus 30 is 30, 0 plus 45 is 45, and 0 plus 60 is 60. Repeat the process. So 90 plus 30 is 120, 90 plus 45 is 135, 90 plus 60 is 150. And we'll continue. 180 plus 30 is 210. 180 plus 45 is 225, 180 plus 60 is 240, and then the last quadrant starting at 270, I do 270 plus 30 is 300, 270 plus 45 is 315, and 270 plus 60 is 330 degrees. So now that I have all of my angles filled in, I want to figure out my radians. So my tip for you is, again, let's start with the quadrantal angles. So all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians. And I'm going to take 2 pi radians and split it into quarters. So if I split 2 pi into half, first of all, I get pi. If I split 0 and pi into half, I get pi over 2. So 0, 2 pi, or sorry, 0 pi over 2 and pi are my first ones. And then if I take 0 and 2 pi, halfway in between there is 1.5 or 3 halves of a pi. Now that I have my quadrantal angles labeled, I want to work from the y-axis and label the denominators as 3, 4, 6. So see here how the degrees go 3, 4, 6 from the x-axis. We're going to go 3, 4, 6 this time from the y-axis, and this will be the denominators of my radical angles. So 3, 4, 6, again from the y-axis, 3, 4, 6, and 3, 4, 6. Now I'm going to label the numerators using one, one less, one more, double one less. So in quadrant number one, all of the angles are just one pi. Quadrant one is one. In quadrant number two, see how I've almost come and reached pi, but I'm less than pi. So since I'm less than pi, I'm going to label my numerators as one less. So the numerators are one less than the denominator. In quadrant number three, starting at zero, I go past pi. So in quadrant number three, I'm more than pi. So since I'm more than pi, my numerator will be one more than the denominator. And in my last quadrant, I'm going from zero all the way around to two pi, but I'm less than two pi. I'm less than a double pi. So in this quadrant, the numerators will be double one less. So the numerator is double one less the denominator. So now that we have degrees and radians, now we just have to fill in our coordinates. So here's my tip for you. First of all, let's label the quadrantal angles first. So these are all on the axes, and they're either positive or negative x or y intercepts. So I have those labeled. Now we're going to label our quadrant 1 points using 3, 2, 1. So look at my x-coordinate. See how it's a 1 and it goes down to be a 0? I'm starting big to small. So big to small, I label it as 3, 2, 1. And then if you look at your y-coordinate, your y-coordinate is 1, your x-coordinate is 0, so 1 down to 0. I'm going big to small, so I label that as 3, 2, 1. So as soon as I have my quadrant 1 labeled, I just place all the other points in the quadrants with the correct signs. So Let's start with 30 degrees. So 30 degrees has a coordinate of root 3 over 2 and a half. So if I place that into quadrant 2, it'll have coordinates negative root 3 over 2 and a half. If I place it into quadrant number 3, it will have coordinates negative root 3 over 2 and negative a half. And if I place it into quadrant 4, it will have coordinates of positive root 3 over 2 and negative a half. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my 45 degree angle. So 45 is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So placing that into quadrant 2, I should see a negative positive. Negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. In quadrant 3, both coordinates are negative. So negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. 
And in quadrant number four, it should be positive negative. So root two over two and negative root two over two. Lastly, we do 60 degrees. So my 60 degree angle has coordinates of a half and root three over two. So in quadrant number two, negative positive, it will be negative a half and positive root three over two. In quadrant number three, negative negative, it will be negative a half and negative root three over two. And in quadrant number four, positive negative, it will be positive a half and negative root three over two. So those are my tips. Now the unit circle is complete with degrees, radians, and coordinates. So I hope these little patterns and the way of labeling the unit circle helped, and I'll see you for the next video.